positive memory that you can take on with you to the day you die. You can go on and say to your children, my father was a good man. He took care of me even until his last breath. We come in here and we talk about what Father's Day mean to us. We talk about uh, how good a day it means. But as we talk about these things, as the whole world, and my father is celebrated in many, many, many countries. Yep. Celebrated around the world. As we talk about our father, as we praise, as we, as we celebrate fatherhood, and the inspiration of father's gift, We are, being, we are also being forced. We also got to force ourselves to not overlook. You don't mean to overlook it. But it, it, we have to force ourselves. In order to celebrate, we have to force ourselves to, to uh, put aside it. There is one little elephant that's in the room, the inconvenient truth. Uh-huh. See, in a perfect world, Uh-huh. A child should have a mother and a father present in the household. Uh -huh. yes. In a perfect world, the father would do whatever it takes to make sure that child has what it needs. In a perfect world, in a perfect world, we can rely on our fathers if we need help with anything. If we we have uh, if we need advice on something. But unfortunately, the, in, the inconvenient truth, the elephant in the room is we don't live in a, in a perfect, perfect world. world. Ain't no Sadly, we don't live in a world where everyone respects that idea that the father should be there for their family and for their children. In order for us to celebrate this day, we have to kind of, not so much discipline, but we have to kind of put it in the back of our minds, yeah, it's there. But we have to also realize that there are some people right here that can't say, my biological father is with me. Amen. Amen, baby. In a perfect world, we can't say that there, there's some people here, there's people on this earth that wish that they could say, my father took care of me. My father was there with me. My father is hung in there. Even when I was at my work, my father hung in there. In a perfect, a perfect world, who might say, this is in a perfect world. And unfortunately, People that grew up have been in abusive homes with less than good fathers. And we, 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 we could just pretty much narrow that. If we could think of the worst possible father, we just categorize the worst possible father. And, and, and I, I know this father's able. I also like, and we also got to address this well because the thing of the matter is, this when we preach, we don't just preach to one era. We preach to, this preach to everyone. Uh -huh. And so on Father's Day, we celebrate the fathers that stuck in, that stuck in there. But what about the fathers that didn't stick in there? They just didn't hung out. We can describe the the no, the no good. Yeah. Low down. Low down.
experience. Because there's a few people that can say, I may experience a good father, but I had experience <laughs> of no good, low life, deadbeat of a father. I have experienced those times when my father was supposed to, my biological father was supposed to be there. And he was out there at a bar somewhere drinking his problems away. I can't experience what it means for to have a father that does take care of me, but I can't, I can I, I can tell you about experience. I can tell you about that one time my father beat me till I was unconscious. <laughs> I, I, I can't relate to a father being there in every uh, uh, honor roll, uh, uh, honor roll program. But what I can relate to is when my father, yeah, I, uh, each time you want to act up, I got to hide in a closet somewhere just to hide from him while he was drunk. Come on now, come on, preacher. Can we talk about those type of fathers just for a minute? Go ahead, man. Go ahead. Because like I said, like I said before, we would love to live in a perfect world, but unfortunately, we're not That's in right. a perfect world. That's right. And unfortunately, those type of fathers exist. So I can just hear right now this Somebody out there just screaming and trying to say, okay, what's with this father's thing? I had a father that just left me when I was nine. Yes. Beat my mom and they were sitting there drinking her problems away. Why should I celebrate Father's Day when I got a father like that? Jesus. When I needed him the most, he was not there. Why should I celebrate Father's Day? When I have a father like that, give me one good reason why I should sit here and talk about how good, just sit there and try to polish up a turn and talk about how good my father did and what he done for me. But I've caught so much hell being with him for the past, my whole years of my early life. I've caught hell with him. Why should I celebrate Father's Day? Come on, minister. Tell the truth. Yeah, everybody else had good fathers. Yeah, all the really good. But what about my father? That internal scream can be heard, heard from everywhere without actually listening to it. That is the elephant in the room, the inconvenient truth. And we have to realize this isn't a perfect world. And see, the thing about that is, outside world, they just celebrate fathers. And that's your father. He's a biological father. He's still celebrating him. Yeah, he was a man. He's he still to celebrate him. But what does God say? Yay! Jesus! What does Yay. God say about those type of fathers? And why we should we celebrate? The topic of my son is the product of a fathered nation. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. The product of a fathered nation. Yes. Okay. Okay. And what word would I say, a fathered nation? And this, when I just got to say this and wrote down, they have been losers of a father that exists here in this imperfect world. The product of a fathered nation. I'm going to share with you some statistics. These are some statistics I pulled up. Sixty-three percent of youth suicides come from fatherless homes. Yep. The best question, why should I celebrate Father's Day? Ninety percent of all homeless and rural children are from fatherless homes, so why should I celebrate Father's Day? Eighty-five percent of all children who show behavior disorders come from Fatherless homes, 20 times the average. That one child that, that's in that statistic is pretty saying, why should I celebrate Father's Day? 71% of all high school dropouts come from fatherless homes, nine times the average. What the, 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 that child that's in that statistic said, why on earth should I celebrate Father's Day? Come on, right. See, while other paths they talk about it going fine, but let's just, let's just can, can we just address this issue just for a minute? Because believe it or not, God has a message even for this issue right here. Come on now. That's right. Come on now. That's right. Children with fathers who are involved are forty percent of the time less likely to report uh, to repeat a grade in school. That child 
felt like my father did, wasn't concerned about me, my development. He didn't care. Why should I celebrate Father's oh, Day? Uh -huh. For the three percent of your children live without their fathers. And say, why should I celebrate Father's Day? I can go on, I can go on, I can go on about the statistics of why, what happens when a father is not present or a father is not doing anything in the children. I can go on and on and on and on. The question will be to say, of every child that is in the statistic, they will say the same thing. Why on earth should I celebrate Father's Day? You bring that up to any of the church that's just going on with the emotions of Father's Day, they get silent. Mm -hmm. What is there to say? What is, what, is this, what is there to say to the children that didn't make it? Because they didn't have a father in their life, or they, they they didn't make it to their potential because they didn't have a father. What is there to say? And the people that has fathers, people that had fathers, are like they can't say anything. What can they say? They can't relate to that child. And then God starts to speak. Hey. Go on to Second uh, Second Kings chapter twenty-two. If you have about it, we're going to go to uh, Second Kings chapter twenty-two. See, so, so now we identify not everyone is born with a silver spoon in their mouth. Some have had harder lives than others. See, it's very important to have that father figure in the household. Yes, it is. It's very important. Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 30 and one years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was uh, Je oh, oh, Lord. Jediah, the daughter of Boscar. Boscar, thank you so much for coming out with me. That right. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, and walked in all the way of David his father, and turned not aside to the right hand or left. Now, before I continue on, I'm just to give you a little background on Josiah. His uh, lineage did nothing but evil in the sight of the Lord. That's he true. did everything that That's was true. opposite of what the Lord called him to do. That's true. Amen. Josiah, he was eight years old when he became king. And the only thing he, the only thing he, he knew was what his, uh, a lineage did. But then again, that one thing he knew, but then he also had a like, superhero. You know how child, how the children have like a superhero? Like, what do you say, bro? Ah, oh, my superhero, Superman. 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 But see, Josiah had a, a hero, though. That he loved to follow, and that was King David. Uh huh. That was yes, a superhero. Yes. Uh huh. And continue on. And continue on. He said, and it came to pass in the 18th year of King Chim Josiah that the king said, "Oh Lord, here, this is about here. Uh, um, verse three, <laughs> Shaphan. Okay. Did I say it right? Well, you, you uh, and it came to pass in the 18th year of King Josiah that the king said." Shaphan. Right, oh, I got it right. The son of Azalea. 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 Azalea, the son of. The king of. Wait a minute. Meshulam. Meshulam, the uh -huh. scribe to the house of the Lord, saying, Go up to Hilkiah. I got Hilkiah. it. Hilkiah. 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 <laughs> the, the high That's priest, all right. That he may sum the silver which is brought into the house of the Lord which the keepers of the door have gathered of the people, and let them deliver it to the hands of the doers of the work that has the oversight of the house of the Lord, and let them give it to the doers of the work, which is in the house of the Lord to spread the breaches of the house. I'm going to skip over 
I'm gonna skip over to verse uh, uh, um, verse eight. And Hilkiah, 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 the high priest said unto Shaph Shaphan the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Hil Hilkiah. Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan, and he read it. And Shaphan the scribe came to the king and brought the king word again and said, Thy servants have gathered the money that was found in the house and delivered it into the hand of them that do the work, that, that have the oversight of the house of the Lord. See, I'm going to explain what happened. So one day, Josiah's servants found the book of the law. And he said they were going to bring it to him. Uh -huh. And the scribe started to read it. Uh -huh. Come on, Minister. And, and verse 10, he said, And Shaphan the scribe showed the king, saying, Hilkiah, mm -hmm. the priest, had delivered me a book. And Shaphan read it before the king. Uh -huh. And it came to pass, when the king had heard the words of the book, of the law, that he ripped his clothes. Uh -huh. And the king commanded Hilkiah, the priest, and, oh Lord, Akim, uh -huh. the son of Shaphan, uh -huh. and Akbor, the son of, oh Lord, Machaliah, Machaliah, and Shaphan the scribe, and that A word, <laughs> Messiah, <laughs> Messiah, son of the Lord King said, Go ye and cry of the Lord for me and for the people and for all Judah concerning the words of this book that is found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is kindled against us, because our fathers have not hearkened unto the words of this book to do according unto all that which is written concerning us. He read the book of the law, mind the book of the law, the book of Moses. Well, this is the book of what he's supposed to be doing according to the God. He read the book and stopped and read his clothes. It's like, oh my goodness. My ancestors have been doing this all wrong. Uh huh. We're going to fix this. There's so many words that what the scriptures say. Mind you, this Josiah, he had a history, he had a history and the lineage of people doing evil in the sight of the Lord. Uh -huh. Josiah had a father that was doing wrong. Uh -huh. Josiah had a father that no good. Yes. That be loser yes. father. Yes. He was about to show them the right way, but yes. instead did his own thing. Yes. Uh -huh. Showed him the wrong way. And he, he had Sin. 
That was his start. That was it. But that wasn't his finish. Come on now. That's what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. That's what I'm talking about. We can talk about statistics all day long about fathers home, but the thing of the matter is the reason why you are here, the real reason why you are listening to the sound of my voice, because there was a small, still voice while you was going through your mess, while you was Thanks. going through being around an abusive yes. father, while you going around being with that no good, low down, wow. deadbeat loser of a father. It was a small, still voice that whispered in your ear, said everything that had low down. No good, abusive father said that was negative about you. I disagree. Hey! Hey! Come on now! So understand this. The reason why you are here is not by your strength. Because there was, there was a one still voice when you were sitting there being beaten up by your father, being molested by your father. There was one still small, still voice saying that you are somebody. reason why you can look back at the times and say that I had a low down, no good, dead be loser of a father is because you yield to that still voice saying that you are better. That's right. Come on now. That's right. Come on now. Preach it. See, see the thing is, this is where statistics come in. This is where people say, right off the statistics, they're like, I, 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 I. I didn't have a, if my dad would have uh, treated me better, if I had a better dad, if my dad was in my life, I would have been a better person. But you don't understand. See, the, the thing of the matter is, uh, people that didn't have their father in like they were so busy uh, 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 fitting the role of victim. Yes. yes, it was horrible what your father did. Yes. But understand this, you, you're so busy fitting the role of victim that you don't realize that you are actually the victim. Yes. I don't need to win but I'm going to repeat that. You are. you are so busy blaming your father, your, your, your earthly father, for all the things that you've done, all the things he's done to you. Yes. How it hurt you as a child and how it stunts your growth, but yes. you don't realize that you are actually the victim. Yes. Because the thing that matters is all the stuff that no good, low down, deadly father done to you that was not that was, uh, that disagreed in the sight of the Lord was meant to destroy you. But here you are. Hello. Here you are. Yes, we are. Talking. Breathing. Breathing. You're here at church. Yes. Not because of your earthly father. That's right. Because of the father that's above here. Hello. Hey. Oh, 
bigger than you. Psalms ah! ah! so, chapter 1 3, verse 13. Hold on, don't go to that right quick. Yes, yes, yes. Now, now, now David had a strong relationship with Christ. Now I'm gonna explain you why uh, Josiah saw King David as a superhero. Because King David would say songs, we would make up songs, something like this. 103, verse 13. He would say, like as a father, pitted his children. So the Lord pitted them that fear him. He would write something like Psalms in 68, 4 through 6. I'm gonna go to that right quick. Chapter 4, verse was said, sing unto God, sing praises to his name, extol him that rises upon the heavens by his name, John, and rejoice before him, a father, a father. the father, a father. Oh, hey, oh. To see, to, uh, King Josiah saw David as a superhero because King, they were so, so full of the Lord that he would start to write something like this. Yes. A father of the fatherless and a judge of the widows is God in his holy habitation. God set up the solitary in family. In family. He bring up those which are bound with a chain, but the rebellious dwell in a dry land. Understand this. No matter who you are, no matter, no matter what your background is, no whether you had, when you didn't have a father in your life, whether your father left you at a long age, when you had that no good, low down, dead beat, loser of a father, no matter what, you are not fatherless. And see, this is how God, this is how much God loves Why we're so concentrating on the biological father, that biological father that's not, wasn't in our life. God send people our way. Yes. Would it be for a season? Always. Would it be for just one minute? Yes. Would it be for two years? Yes. God will send people your way. To just act, just show a display of fatherhood. What do I mean by that? You could be just sitting there. And an old man, an old man could be sitting right next to you and decide to talk to you, to lend you his wisdom. It doesn't matter if you're a boy or a girl. You have that old man, he feels so compelled because he sees the young generation failing. And he's like, well, maybe my wisdom can help. And so maybe you would see him like, oh, he just want to talk, he just want to talk his head off, he just want to sit there, I'll just listen. But, but that old man felt compelled to share a little bit of wisdom that can carry you on to the, to the next century. Or, or that teacher that, that, that's in school decided to show you a little compassion yeah. when you were trying your best on the test, then finally Rose steps in and like, you get an A for effort. Hey! Oh, that man, that man decided to help you out with your brother. He, you may not know him, but he decided to just help you out. That God sent people your, your, your way, me in your way. You cannot tell me that though it's like you've never met a man that did not show compassion, did not show compassion. No one person is an island. We all, we all had to take care of each other. And that's the beauty of God. That's the beauty of the Lord. You tell, see, and see, this is the answer question. You tell that no good, dead be father, thank you. Because if he had not did all those things, you wouldn't be searching for God in the first place. That's right. Hello? See, the thing that as we all, as human beings, we're all searching for love. We're all searching for acceptance. If we don't, and it hurts when you don't get it from the main people that's supposed to love you. Exactly. But it's good to know that there's a heavenly father above us that loves us no matter what. Even if we don't recognize him, even if we, 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 don't, we seem to forget him, he never forgave us. 
The reason why you are here and breathing because God has never left you. God has been that father figure when you haven't even recognized it. Yes. Yes. The product of a father nation. Yes. Today is Father's Day. You go and find a new father and say, Happy Father's Day. If you had that no good deadbeat father, tell him Happy Father's Day. Father. Post him. Have a Understand that at this point, this, I'm, I'm getting ready to close because this is a short message. Mom said, said this in the Hebrews uh, celebration. He said, God has specifically tailored our lives, every problem, every situation, he specifically tailored to fit you because he knows how much you can bear. Only a father, only a father can do that. He knows how much you bear. You don't put more on you than you can bear. God, don't you know that God loves you? The reason why you are here and breathing is because God loves you. The reason why you hung in there for so many years, despite what you've been through, is because God loves you. God was that father figure when your earthly father failed you, when your stepfather failed you, when all the fathers that's supposed to be in your life, that's supposed to take care of you, failed you. God stepped in and said, I will be, I will be that father right. for the fatherless. You want a reason to celebrate. Those that, that say I don't have a father, you want a reason to celebrate Father's Day. There it is. Right here. Because the thing of the matter is, we can just celebrate our earthly fathers all day long, but there are earthly fathers here that don't fit the bill as a God, as a good father. But the thing of the matter is, we got that one being, that one God, that will always fit the role of a perfect father. Always. That's why we celebrate Father's Day, no matter who you are, no matter what you are. That's why you celebrate Father's Day. Thank you. So the next time someone asks you, why do you I don't have a father, why should I celebrate Father's Day? You tell them this. You have a father. You're a product of a father nature. The reason you are here is because of God.